Can we get on right on top of it? Oh yeah, we can. Look at that. <laughs> I love this game, you guys. It's so awesome. All right, guys, we got the lines painted and colored all the way down and back. I had to <laughs> make that run like four times. It was funny. Uh, anyway, so next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at lights. So we have this floodlight tower here, and then we have the street lights. I'm curious. Oh, wow, that thing's huge. That's like a major big tower um yeah i don't think that's what we want uh for this so let's grab the street lights here and what we could do is put these in the center are there variations of this ceiling light oh okay no it just cycles through the lights itself gotcha okay what if we put eh, what I was thinking of is something along this lines or no 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 no, no not that Like this. The first problem with that is it janks into each other's um, connector. So that's not ideal. And the second problem is it's kind of jutting out into the road. Not that that's a big problem, but I mean... It is a potential place for the trucks to get caught up on, but they shouldn't. Ooh, I'm, ooh, man, that's almost touching the thing too, isn't it? Hmm. How much light do these give off? Let's do this. Let's run a... Um, I think I actually would want to bring that up from down below because we got it. This is where the truck station is going to go, so we got to keep that open. So let's go to this toolbar and put a double connector in. I guess right here. And then what we can do is see what's going on down here power-wise. There we go. Look at that. Run this up to here. All right. That's how much light they give off. I mean, it kind of looks cool, though, you know? Like it's it's all one piece. It's too bad they didn't make double lights. They don't really uh, cover a whole lot of area, though, do they? All right. What if we... What if we... Turn them here. I'm going to actually put these down in slot number eight. There we go. Oh, I just erased it. Cut it out. There we go. What if we put them this way? I mean, this might look silly, but can we? Oh, wow. Okay, so we can't put the we can't actually glitch those right into 
the divider. So, okay, well, that answers that question. Well, then the other thing, of course, that would make sense. Okay, we can glitch these into the rails. That's good. Um, is to go this direction. But, um, I don't know how it's going to look on this side, though. Let's turn it this way. Oh, well, that could work. We'd have to move the uh, power connector. Let's just look and see. You know, the thing is, is this one light by itself pretty much covers the whole roadway. So we almost wouldn't even need this other one. Let's light it up anyways, just to see what it does. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think... Hmm, I don't even think that's necessary to have this other one here. The other thing we could do is... Let's try something else. What if we removed that and put the light in this way and then did this whoops oh 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 okay look at that that's how we make that work that's even better and then we could run the lights just down the center like that and that way I don't have to put two in, plus it'll save power and all of that, all of those advantages. Yeah, I kind of like that, actually. I kind of like that. Okay, so if that's what we're going to do, uh, let's start by putting that one in there. And we'll figure out lighting over here uh, in a different way we have other options and I guess yeah we'll just start this one here and then everything else will daisy chain down the line the thing is though how much does this consume does it tell us oh look at that man we can change the color there's a night mode Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, it doesn't tell us you can change the intensity. Oh, this is really cool, you guys. Uh, it doesn't tell us though. Ooh, look at that. That ha has kind of a black light look to it. it. Doesn't tell us how much it consumes. If we go into to the build menu, floodlight. Uh, no, not floodlight, street light. Oh, one megawatt. Okay. So only one megawatt. Um, I'm kind of liking that blue look. L let's let's just keep it white for now, though. Um, and I might play around with that later. Now I guess the next question is, what do I want the spacing of these to be? I don't think I want to put so many in that the light overlaps. That that's just going to be. A pain in the butt, A, and expensive to do. So what if we, we let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What if we went every ten? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it would start here. Oops. Okay, and then we run the power from here to here. I 
I don't know. I guess I'm not 100% convinced I like that. I've, I, I'm thinking... I'm thinking the lights probably should be on the side of the road and then looking over it rather than down the center. There's something about it that just doesn't quite... Um, whoops. Doesn't quite work for me. All right, guys. We have the lights done, and I think it looks pretty darn good. So we ran them all the way around uh, back to the, the pickup station, and yeah, pretty... Pretty happy with how it turned out. Whoa, shit. Um, ouch. Okay. Um, okay, so we have that done. Um, now, the final thing we're going to do for today is we're going to set up the truck stations and the truck path. So, let's go ahead and go to transportation and truck station. We want to turn this around uh, this way. Yeah, like this. And we're going to put the truck station in right here. I th think. Here, let's, yeah, let's line it up with that. So, yeah. Yep, I like that. Okay, so we'll put it right there. Um, now, what we're going to do with this is let's go ahead and hook up the power first of all okay and the way this works is that the truck station has three different connections it's got an output an input and there's two of them as you can see and then a fuel section so this one is going to be a drop off so we want to make sure that it's set to unload down here Okay, that's really important. If you forget to do that, then things won't work. And then what we do is we, because this is an unload, um, we're going to connect to the outputs of this and then this will go into our machine. So, so this is basically the conveyor belt, you know, connections here. And the cool thing about this is that you can have uh, two connections running at the same time. And the, um, the description of this, it says 120 stacks per minute, okay? Notice that that means stacks, not items, but stacks. So this thing can transfer a crap ton of materials. Um, so that means we really only need one truck station. Uh, well, at least in terms of quantity, one truck station can handle a lot. Now, now you might want to have multiple truck stations for different production lines, more for organization purposes, but at least in terms of capacity, this thing uh, really rocks, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is, we're going to, just to kind of demonstrate this, uh, this is all temporary, it's just to kind of get the route and all that set up. So let's just assume that, you know, this is our, our production line, okay? And again, this is all temporary. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, let's see, go back to our other tool, our number one toolbar, and grab a Mark III belt and two Mark III belts. Not worried about it being lined up or anything like that. This is just, just to get it started. Uh, again, it's all temporary. Now, one thing you can do and will want to do, however, I'm not going to do this on this end. I'm going to do it on the, on the input end, is you can put a splitter here and then... Um, run the fuel into here as well so you so this fuel slot is always full and what what will happen is the trucks or the tractors will just pull from here to refuel itself and it all happens automatically and it's a beautiful thing okay um, so so this will be actually connected to our our foundries uh, once we get the actual production line set up but for now we're just gonna set it there so it has a place to go and that's really all we have to do uh, with the truck station it's really you know fairly simple in terms of setting it up Okay, now, um, the next thing we're going to do is let's get, uh, do I have enough room to make a track or enough stuff to make a tractor? I do, but I want to actually do that on the other end because we're going to start recording the route from the other end. So let's hyper tube down to the other end. Uh, we want to take the south connection 
and um, then we'll put up we'll put up the station there and hook all that stuff up and then we'll record the route from there back to here okay so now we're on this end so let's grab ourselves another truck station and we're gonna flip it around again like so and this one we're gonna put um, right I think here or do we want to move it back this way a little bit now we want to make sure there's enough room for the truck to, to turn around so let's put it right there so the loading area is right on this line yeah that should work okay we'll connect the power up to here now this one is a load so we want to keep that on load now what we're gonna do in this case is we're going to run our conveyor lines into here so to do that we're going to want to make sure this is nice and neat as usual and so i think what i'll do is let's run yeah let's run this one first and we'll just keep this one down on the on the ground and maybe we Nah, maybe we should keep it up a little bit. Nah, let's keep it on the ground so it's even with the with the input here. Yeah, okay. So we'll connect this, bring this down to the ground, hook it up there. Um, now we want, uh, this is all Mark III, of course. Now we're in business. Okay, so what this will do again is this will just fill this with fuel, uh, which is coal in this case, uh, for the tractor, and the tractor will just automatically refuel itself from here. And then the rest of it's, you know, filling up here, in this case at 240 items per minute because that's what the miner is producing. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a stacking conveyor right here. And I think, yeah, just at that level. And then we're going to bring this down to right above. And it's kind of clipping into that a little bit. But you know what? We're going to live with it. We're not going to worry about that. If it was clipping in, into it to the point where the product was itself was moving into that, then I'd probably be a little more concerned with it. But... I think we're going to run with that. Okay, uh, so now you can see it's really filling up quickly because it's got two of them, you know, filling at the same time. So it's just going to town there. And the fuel is, is completely full too. Okay, so now for the fun part. The fun part is recording the route. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a tractor. Okay, and we're going to get in the tractor. Uh, does this have fuel in it? No, but it does now. Okay. Uh, no, wait. There. Okay. Okay, so what we want to do is we... Whoops. We want to put the tractor right over underneath the loading thing. You don't have to get it exactly under as long as it's you know fairly close it'll load the load the loader is really more just for visual anyways it just has to be kind of in this general vicinity but we're gonna we're gonna put it right there okay now I can manually load the cargo right and if I do that to press F it's gonna take about 1,000 2, 1,000 3, 1,000 4, 1,000 5, 1,000 6, 1,000 7, 1,000 so it takes about seven seconds but let's just let's just say eight seconds um we'll just say it's about eight seconds now yeah, maybe maybe we'll make it even 10 just just to be on the safe side uh, let me look at something though is this yeah see it 
it filled that up, but you know, this isn't completely full yet. So I th I'm thinking maybe 10 seconds is probably good. And you know, we can always adjust it too. And I'll show you how we can adjust it uh, later. Okay. So this is the starting point for the load. Um, and I'm gonna just, I don't have to do this, but just, just for funsies, the box actually dropped right about here. Okay. So let's get this lined up. Right about there. Okay, that's good. All right, so now what we need to do is we're basically going to drive the tractor along the route that it needs to take. Uh, so if we press Q, we have this option that says start recording. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit it now. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten. Okay, so it's loaded, and now the truck takes off. And basically, we just drive it along the route that it needs to take. See, this is a little tight here, so that might, hmm, that might cause some problems. I don't know. We'll see. The thing is, is that the truck can correct itself, but if it's doing that too many times, it's going to potentially, you know, it's going to take longer for it to get to its destination. Once this thing gets up to full speed, it kind of bounces around a little bit too, which is weird. It shouldn't because it's on a flat paved surface, but it does. So I'm not sure why that happens, but you have to kind of make sure you keep it in the center. Okay, we're going to slow it here, have it turn. And I, I don't know this for sure, but I think the game might um, kind of smooth this out when it's on autopilot. It's not necessarily doing all the little glitchiness that I'm doing because this is digitally controlled, you know, with the keys and all that. Okay, so we come into the station here. We want to, just for funsies, get it pretty well lined up. That's close enough. Now F to unload cargo. You can see in the lower right hand corner there's like a little status bar too. There might have been when we were loading and I didn't notice. Okay, so it loads up, it turns around, and heads on back. Okay, now what we have to do is close the loop. So we just drive it around this way, hit here, and the path is recorded. All right, neat. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into the record menu by holding Q down or pressing Q, and we're going to tell it. Uh, actually, let's save this route first. Uh, so we're going to just call this. Um, um, we're just going to call it Coal Truck Route. And you know as time goes on and we add more routes you know we'll probably want to use a little more descriptive names but for now this is the only route that we have okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of back this up a little bit and you can see that you know there's little nodes that show up and you can go up to these nodes um, and press E to edit and then you can change uh, the wait time. I don't know why this one's one second though. It should be. It should be ten seconds. Here, let's make it ten seconds. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay, so that's ten seconds. Uh, these nodes, you can delete them if you, you know, if they're in the wrong place. Um, I don't know if you can move them though. Yeah, it's just it's just just a delete option if you you know had one in the wrong place or whatever. Okay, so if we look in here, there's nothing in our our cargo at the moment, and now what we do is we get in the tractor, we go to Q and we enable autopilot, 
And this is where we can hide the path nodes too. Okay, then we hop out and there she goes. It's a little derpy there. Um, okay, there it goes. All right, let's just follow it and see, um, you know, how it does. So it's okay. It did that corner reasonably well. Seeing it's loaded up with coal too. Can we get on right on top of it? Oh yeah, we can. Look at that. <laughs> I love this game, you guys. It's so awesome. Look at this. Okay. Yeah, we'll just ride on top of it and then let it just see if it can hit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do the route okay. You know, actually, I must. I'm wrong. I was wrong about that. It is still doing kind of the little derpity derp stuff that it did when I was controlling it. So it's doing exactly what I told it to do. But the thing about it is if it does get stuck, it, it's able to get itself unstuck. And the way that that works is it'll it'll try and back up and move forward and back up and move forward a couple times. And if that doesn't work, then it just kind of teleports. All right, it got that corner good. Uh, it'll just kind of teleport to get back on its route. So it's really neat that that works that way because my understanding is it used to not work that way and if you didn't do this like perfectly then the trucks wouldn't work and it was a big pain in the butt and you know once it gets up to speed you can see that it's it's moving along fast and I can add another tractor I can add as many as I want to actually uh, if we need to I don't know if we're gonna need to for this first setup but if we do we just plop another one down we've already saved the route uh, okay let's hop off here unloads the cargo and it looks like it's just okay we we don't have it doesn't have to stay here for that long so you know what we're gonna do is let's go uh, X show hide path and let's edit this see I don't know why that's 18 seconds. It doesn't need to be 18 seconds. Let's just make it 10 like the other one is. Confirming we'll update the wait time for this note. Confirm. Okay. Let's just make it 10 for that. I mean, it offloaded in way more than 10 seconds, but... Now, the thing I don't know what to do... Actually, we should try and catch up to because I want to make sure it gets back. If we can catch up to it. <laughs> Um, even, well, even if we don't catch all the way up to it, we can at least make sure that it's going hit, to hit it all of its corners okay. Yeah, we got that one good. Now, what I was saying is I don't know how to... Um, I don't know how to remove the nodes without being inside of the tractor. If there's a way to do it, I'm not sure how to do that. There probably is, but I'm not sure how to do it. Let's just see what it it does on the final. I think it'll be okay on this corner, but I want to see how it's going to turn around over here because it did something a little derpy when we first started it. But then again, I didn't have it on the direct path either, so that might might have had something to do with it. Okay. Now uh, he hit the thing there a little bit, but not it didn't actually stop him, so. Okay, let's jump off here and see what it does. It should be fine. It should do exactly what I did. There we go. Um, it is I don't know why it's at an angle there, that's kind of weird, but it doesn't get caught up, so I think we're gonna be okay with it. All right, you guys, well, there we go. Nice. We got the truck route running. Very cool. Okay, so um, that is it for this episode. The next episode is going to be... Um, oh, <laughs> uh, The next episode is going to be um, setting up the advanced steel production chain. So we're, we're going to set up a line for... Um, whoops. 
uh, set up a line for in case industrial beams which is going to be relatively simple to do um, I want to just oh we messed it up actually this is interesting watch this we, we've totally screwed it up okay I'm gonna hide the path that's the reason I hopped in here now let's let's watch it correct itself or tr at least try to oh it flipped around and went the other way oh that's interesting okay well I mean that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna pull down the the storage chests that are taking the coal right now anyways because I, I just want to had that in place temporarily to set up the route usually what it'll do though is if, if it would have stayed stuck on here after about I don't know 10 seconds or so it just automatically teleports and and resumes its route so that works out pretty good okay anyway yeah like I said now we're gonna set up in case industrial beams uh, which will be fairly easy to do um, and then we're gonna set up a production line for motors and that one's going to be complicated or or more complex i should say just because of all the stuff that is required to make a full production line when i say full production line i mean everything from start to finish on that line makes motors as opposed to tapping into you know the, some of the other stuff they already have so um that's going to be the plan for the next episode you guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and if i don't get that next episode recorded uh, before Christmas, I want to wish all of you who celebrate it a very Merry Christmas. I hope you ha enjoy the holiday, have a great and safe and fun time with family and friends, and get lots of goodies. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.